People are always freaked out a little bit, but mostly it's the smell. Well, there's a little noise to it. You can hear the sound of the beetles, especially when you have a lot of larvae in there and eating so fast, you can hear that little Most people are pretty fascinated by it once they get past that initial hurdle of flesh-eating beetles. My name is Ben Marks. I'm the head of zoological collections and the collection manager of birds. My name is Mary Hennen, and I am the assistant collection manager for the bird department at the Field Museum. Now these scavenger beetles, they're called flushing beetles, the scientific term would be domestic beetles. They eat all the meat away and we're left with the bones itself. We use domestic beetles to actually prepare museum specimens and in particular we've used domestids to prepare our huge data set on migratory birds. Running them through the live domestic colony is the most efficient way of cleaning that meat off. Over the last 30 years or so, we've actually added about 80,000 specimens of migratory birds that have met their unfortunate demise uh, as they were either making their way south or north through Chicago. Many of those birds would have been swept up in the early morning hours by building managers and thrown into dumpsters and totally lost to science. Now those birds are actually coming here, which can be used in studies to learn more about bird behavior in general, bird biology, and especially bird migration. First, you find it dead. You bring it into the museum. It's going to get logged into a field catalog book, and you're going to record where it was found and when it was found. And we're going to record things that we're going to lose as well, so we're going to weigh the bird. It then gets photographed, it gets to the ruffers where we take the feathers out of the way, we record fat levels, we can look inside and say, hey, it's a boy, it's a girl. Then a little tissue is going to be safe for genetics. Then it becomes a process of waiting for it to go into the bugs. Our rule of thumb generally is a passerine up to a woodcock can literally be cleaned overnight. Something larger, you think of an owl or a hawk, or a heron or something along those size that's going to take anywhere from three or four days to a week to clean off. So you put something larger to get you through the weekend and small stuff that you can process on a day-to-day -day basis. Our domestic beetle colony may be one of the most productive in the United States. Every year we prepare four to 5,000 bird skeletons that we add to our collection. And we've had these same beetles here at the museum for 50-ish years, obviously not the same individuals, but the same lineage of beetles has been preparing skeletons for us for the last four or five decades. It can be difficult to maintain a dermestid colony like we have here for a number of reasons. Those tanks actually fill up with beetle poop essentially and the beetles that have died over the course of the year and so as long as we clean out their aquaria, regulate the environment and keep them well fed, they're going to keep producing specimens for us. My domestic beetle. They're my staff. They work for room and board. 